Now for part two of uh, episode five. I, uh, I want to point out something and, you know, um, the defense counsel pointed this out and I, I want to go in a little more into depth on this. And in order to establish a suspect in a murder scenario, you have to look at somebody who has motive, opportunity, access, and direct connection to the crime. Okay. Now, the first thing that anybody looks at or any reputable worth their badge officer looks at when looking for a suspect in a murder investigation is somebody who has motive. What is motive? Motive is why. Why would somebody harm this person? Why would somebody want to hurt this person or kill this person? What could be the motive? Okay. What would Stephen Avery's motive have been? Did he stand to gain financially from it? I doubt it. Teresa Halbach owned her own business, but anybody who's ever owned a small business knows you're pretty much working at a loss for a while. You know, she was only 25. She couldn't have had that, that business set up for that long prior to the murder. Um, then opportunity. Did Stephen Avery have the opportunity? Well, I guess if you stretch it a little bit, he could have, but... That's stretching it. That's stretching it farther than spandex on a fat woman's ass. I mean, we're looking at a guy who everybody knew that she was going to be there. Her boss knew she was going to be there. Coworkers knew she was going to be there. I mean, that's not really opportunity because everybody knew she was going to be at the Avery property. He'd be the first one that they look at and he fucking knew it. Access. Did he have the access, the means to wit, with which to kill her? Again, not really. I mean, I, I guess everybody has means with which to kill someone. I mean, I have a ballpoint pen. <laughs> that could do some damage if I felt like it to somebody. But uh, yeah, I mean, and then, you know, the direct connection to the crime. What was his connection? The only connection that they found was her bones in his fire pit. But I mean, come on, anybody could have put those there. Why would he, why would he dispose of evidence on his own property? That doesn't make any sense. Now, on the 3rd of November, Mike Halbach testified to this in court. He said on the 3rd of November, his mom called him about Teresa, uh, that she had called Teresa's voicemail several times and the voicemail was full. Mike Halbach then admits to guessing her password and listening to them, those messages, but he denies deleting any. Well, funny, because after that, suddenly there's fucking space free. Um, and then even on, on uh, Zimmerman, Mr. Zimmerman from uh, Singular, he's a networking engineer. He stated that after 2.41 p.m. on the 31st of October, there was no further activity from the cell phone, from the mobile phone, from the unit itself. Okay, so we've crunched it down to 2.41 as the last time she made contact with anybody. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything anyway. I mean... I don't call everybody every second of every fucking day that I'm out and about the world. Do you? Now, uh, Fossbender claims that Avery was not the only one who was investigated. Well, who the fuck else did you investigate, dude? Because I haven't seen any fucking records that state that you spoke to the ex-boyfriend, that you spoke to the family, that you spoke to the roommate. The roommate right there, not fucking alerting anybody that she'd been missing for three damn days. That right there is fucking suspicious as shit. I'm just saying. Um, now, the ex accessed her phone records online. Why? The police had already been called. Why would you do that? Leave it to them. They're the police. Ryan, what do you know? Where is she? Really? What happened to her? Because you know. I know you know. You're number one on my suspect list, pal. Right up there was Scott Taddock. Um, and then what really got me was that he couldn't remember what time of day he last saw her. You remember? 
uh, defense counsel's questioning him on the stand and he's like, oh, I, I saw her that Sunday. Okay, well, what, what, how did you see her? Well, I went over to the house to drop something off for so-and-so and she was on her computer and he asks him, okay, what, do you remember around what time that was? And he's like, no, don't, no idea. He's like morning, afternoon, evening. He's like, no, no idea. How do you not fucking remember what time of day you drove over to somebody's house? At least like, you know, morning, afternoon, evening. How do you not realize what the position of the fucking sun is? I'm saying Ryan fucking knows something. Kratz then says, he's asking Ryan on the stand, you know, why did you look at the Stephen Avery property? And he's like, oh, well, you know, we knew that she was going to be there that day. Kratz says, oh, so as an untrained law enforcement officer, first of all, he's not a law enforcement officer, let alone untrained. He's just a douche nozzle. He says, as an untrained law enforcement officer, you knew to center around the last place she was seen alive. How do you know that's the last place she was seen? You didn't look beyond the Stephen Avery property. You didn't fucking go into town and ask anybody, did you see this car on this day at all, anywhere? You didn't ask shit. You just stuck at the Avery property. But not only that, but of course he would stick around there if he's the one who planted the car. Why wouldn't he put the car on the Avery property, dumbass? It's a fucking salvage yard. Great place to lose a vehicle that you don't want found. Um, then Pam Stern, the, the, her whole, her whole narrative of how she found the vehicle is just strange to me. That's a 40 acre property with a shit ton of vehicles. And she walked right to it within the span of about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Does nobody else find that a little strange? She walked into the property at nine 50 in the morning and by 10 25, she was calling the, the, the detective Sheriff Pogel. It's a 40 acre property, but Ryan was the one who pointed her in the direction of where to start. And Scott gave her a camera. Nobody else had a fucking camera. Folks, this entire investigation was centered around Stephen Avery. It was treated like a fucking murder investigation from day one. I've been saying this for a while now. Now the fact remains That some very suspicious shit was going on prior to Teresa Halbach being reported missing. Point number one, why didn't her roommate call anybody and ask if she'd been seen prior to November 3rd? Point number two, why did the mom just realize that she hadn't heard from her in three fucking days on November 3rd? Number three, no calls were made out from her mobile phone after 2.41 p.m. on October 31st of 2005, but her voicemail was accessed on either November 1st or no November 2nd at 8 a.m., at which time voicemail space was magically freed up. Apparently, the gnomes did it. And the second that Stephen Avery's name is brought into the investigation, into a missing person, all of a sudden Manitowoc County wants to get involved. The only evidence that they find of Teresa Halbach on the Stephen Avery property prior to police presence is the vehicle. After that, suddenly all these little pieces are falling into place. And has anybody noticed that any time that the investigation starts to stall, suddenly something magical happens. A key magically appears. Blood magically manifests itself. Brendan Dassey suddenly fucking confesses. Anybody else noticing this? There's something very wrong here, people, and it needs to be looked into. There is a petition going around right now to the White House asking for an intense investigation into the Manitowoc County and Calumet County Sheriff's Departments. This needs to be signed. Google it, sign it, let's get it done. We'll talk more about the Stephen Avery case in future videos. Thank you for watching.